um, thanks for the introduction. So I'm presenting the, this study on an evaluation of shape changes uh, for conveying emotions. It was made by my colleagues Paul Stromayer, uh, Bernard Cheng, Margaret Maven, and uh, Robert Tegal. So uh, shape and emotion. Uh, psychologists have uh, studied the link between shape and emotion for a long time. For instance, one of the things that have been observed is that humans have a preference for rounded shapes as opposed to uh, uh, more uh, acute or sharp sh ones, right? This was actually mentioned uh, in a very interesting talk uh, yesterday on embodied interaction. And this uh, link has also been successfully exploited uh, and applied by in industrial design to add uh, an emotional dimension to products. Something which is important to have into account is that in human communication, the expression of emotion is supported by nonverbal cues that include facial expressions and body language. And these are uh, essentially shape transitions uh, on part of the body. And uh, this al also includes paralinguistic and touch. And uh, textual communication, like when we are testing, uh, sending an SMS message, lacks all of these uh, nonverbal cues. And on the, side, on the perception side, it has been found by previous work that the perception is indeed, uh, the perception of emotion is indeed, indeed robust and independent of representation. Thus, uh, we can decode emotion from nonverbal cues as long as the human form and motion is preserved. This is a very important point. Previous work uh, has uh, tried to find a link between uh, 2D devices like this and emotion, but uh, let's say that the results has, has, have not been so conclusive. So we wanted to explore if this uh, link could be uh, more uh, clarified. Uh, we, use, we also use a 2D surface similar to this one. Uh, I will show it later. But as opposed to previous work, we actually use shape changes based on the movement, on the actual expressions of the hands of a human, which is, uh, makes a big difference. In order to study emotion and shape, we used a couple of frameworks. Uh, the first one is uh, the circumplex complex model of effect, which was formulated by Russell in 1980. And it uh, essentially, what it essentially says is that each emotion is represented in a coordinate system or could be represented in a coordinate system according to its valence and arousal. So the valence is the positive or negative quality of an emotion, and the arousal is the intensity, the lo either low or high intensity of the emotion. As an example, if, you, if we locate happiness and boredom here, happiness is a highly uh, positive emotion and is uh, like it has a high arousal or mi middle, middle arousal, while boredom is a negative emotion but is not so uh, aroused. On the shape side, uh, we, we wanted to ca characterize shape, so we used an adapted set of parameters from the shape resolution framework. This framework was proposed by Rudeau et al. Uh, for describing self-actuated flexible mobile devices. A well set of uh, features included the convexity or concaveness of the device, the angle and radius of bend, the axis of bend, that is if the device has been mainly bent uh, in the horizontal or vertical axis, um, or diagonally, the granularity, which is the amount of bends, the number of bends in the surface, and uh, we also considered some dynamic parameters uh, that included the speed of motion, the area in motion, and also the amplitude of the motion. So we conducted two studies to explore the link between emotion and shape in a 2D surface substrate. We started by recruiting 20 participants. Nine of them were female. Uh, their mean age was 23.3 uh, years and we asked them to rate the valence and arousal of a set of emotions. We used um, a standard method for this, which is called the self-assessment mannequin method. And uh, we also asked them to create shapes that represented those emotions by deforming a 2D flexible surface device. We focused on this set of emotions, anger, boredom, calm, confusion, contentment, delight, distress, excitement, fear, happiness, love, and sadness. These have been uh, 
used a lot in previous work. So this is the apparatus. Uh, it's a um, flexible surface made out of uh, neoprene, and it has 11 bent sensors, so it allows to sense the deformation uh, over 11 degrees of freedom. It's not very pretty, but it works. Um, we ask the participants to, as I mentioned before, ask the participants to rate the veils and arouse all of the emotions, and we found that the, there was a, uh, some agreement, like enough agreement, uh, which makes sense. And uh, this is a um, figure in which you, we show where the emotions are located. The ovals represent the standard deviation of both parameters uh, for each emotion. We found those the location were similar to those found by Russell. So I think that somehow this uh, validated the, like the agreement in terms of uh, these emotional parameters for emotion for our participants. Uh, and these are some examples of the shapes that they, they created. Okay, <clears throat> so we found um, that there were some common behaviors, some common strategies to create emotion using this, this device. We found that the U shape was frequently used for positive emotions such as contentment, delight, and happiness. Those percentage are the percentage of participants which use uh, those shapes. The an inverted U was used for sadness very frequently. 60% of participants used it for that. More than half of the participants used uh, a heart-shaped fold to indicate love. The crumpled shapes, like made, totally deforming the, the, the device, was very frequently indicated, uh, used to indicate anger. Uh, flat shape was used for boredom and for calm emotion. And uh, we also observe an animated sine wave uh, strategy used by some participants. Uh, it's important to, <clears throat> sorry, it's important to n notice that um, mm, frequently they were trying to emulate face or facial expressions, right? Like a U, uh, inverted U shape would be like a sad face. But they were, it, this was not the only strategy. They were also were trying to create like some sort of body poses. This is a sort of a clapping expression uh, that one participant used. Uh, for excitement. Um, there was also a metaphorical approach. This is the sine wave that I mentioned before, and it was used for, for calm, like a slow oscillating uh, sine wave. And uh, the crumple is like it's somehow, some, somehow like the consequence of an action, right? If you are in anger and uh, you decide to discharge your anger towards the device, then you can make a crumble like that and just uh, deform the device that way. We also evaluated the correlations between the shape parameters as um, extracted from the sensor data and with the, with the emotion parameters. We uh, found that there were some correlations, those that are involved there were significant uh, with a p-value under 0.05. Uh, and you can observe that there are several correlations uh, in terms of the sh of shape, static shape for balance, some for arousal, and uh, the dynamic shape parameters were highly correlated or more correlated to arousal. So we wanted to test this a little bit, and we, just uh, to prove our point, we run a SBN classifier, a support vector machine classif classifier. We trained it with the tenfold cross-validation. And we, after um, running this test, we found that it could classify the shapes, the emotion from the shapes, with a precision of 45.8% and a recall of 40.4%. Uh, uh, please remember that precision is the is a measure of the true positives over the true positives uh, plus the false positives, while recall would be true positives over true positives plus uh, false negatives. This is just half of the story. We also run another study um, 
in which we wanted to assess the possibility to for users to be able to recognize the emotional content from the shapes that uh, were cr uh, created by the participants of the first study. So we created a 3D model uh, in Blender. Uh, we created a skeleton uh, that, uh, which, whose bones were located at the similar locations of the sensors. And we created some uh, videos by anim using the sensor data to animate uh, the 3D model. This is how it looked. So we, we exported these animations as video and put, made them available on a web uh, site and a web page. And then we recruited a, a second set of participants completely different from the first uh, set. Uh, they were uh, also, um, I didn't add the number, but they were also 20. Uh, six of them were female. Uh, their mean age were, was 32.1 uh, age. And then we asked them to watch the videos and um, to select from a list of 12 emotions, the first, the, the same ones that you, you used before, and um, to select from this list what emotion a bird expresses or um, what, what emotion they think was expressed by the, by the video, by the animation. Uh, we also added the option of answering no emotion in case the person didn't think the, emotion, the shape conveyed an emotion at all. The videos were presented in random order and uh, we found that participants were able to recognize the user the correct emotions 35% of the time, while 12.3% of the time they selected no emotion. But this is not, like this is, uh, like getting the precise label is very difficult, but we were more interested in finding out if the uh, emotion qualities were could be identified. So what we did was that we calculated the mean coordinates for the identified emotions for balance and arousal in order to obtain a distance measure between the original measure for the emotion and the perceived measure. So we obtained this. Um, and if you see it in detail, you'll find that uh, maybe there's uh, some a couple of emotions like um, uh, happiness, uh, fear, and contentment, which are all over the place, but most of them at least preserve the, the same qu uh, quadrant in the circumplex model, and some of them are quite close to the original emotions, which seems to be or suggest that the participants were able to understand the emotional qualities, the emotional parameters of this emotion, the arousal and the valence. Um, this, uh, this is a table showing the mean distances um, from, um, uh, so we can say that, we can tell, like it's the same information but in a table format, right? So mean distances uh, for every uh, emotion and we, I, I can, there's there the standard deviation as well for each of them. So our results uh, seem to establish a stronger relationship between the shape change and the emotions in the circumplex model than previously suggested, than previous work, right? One reason for this is that we use distance metrics in the circumplex model instead of just uh, trying to pinpoint uh, nominal categories or to match nominal categories. And uh, we think that uh, this result was uh, probably maybe better than in previous uh, related work be because our shapes were animated uh, by actual humans. Like it was not movement generated programmatically, but it was actual human expression be 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 behind the, the animations. So the, to conclude, um, we found that users can uh, use common patterns when created shapes to convey emotion. We found that these patterns go beyond the imitation of shape of the mouth and the body, uh, but instead they can sometimes use metaphors or more abstract uh, approaches. We found that elements of shape tend to correlate with valence and to some degree with arousal as well, but movement and speed parameters are much more correlated with arousal. And uh, more importantly, we found that there is potential in the use of mobile self-actuated 
shape changing interfaces for the communication of emotion. This, the implication for, from our study are that uh, it's very important to capture the actual emotion and not to try to generate movement uh, from data, from abstract data. It's important to uh, have one or more compact, co convex and concave curvature across the surface of a shape-changing uh, mobile phone to fully capture the, the possibilities uh, of expression of emotion. It's very important to mod modulate the actuation speed and to animate curvatures across the surface of the motion. And uh, we think that uh, we have shown the potential for expressing emotion with the uh, self-actuated uh, shape-changing interfaces, but there's still a lot of work to do, and we're looking forward toward that. That's it. Thanks very much. And Please come forward uh, for questions. And if you're standing outside, I think there's still place on the sides, on the front, to, to stand. Hello, very nice work. Uh, I had a very fundamental question. The selection of the square thing instead of maybe a circle or triangle, how did you arrive at that shape of your test bed? Yeah. You mean the, the actual device with the sensors? Well, it's kind of similar to the shape that a flexible mobile phone would have. Like, uh, if you make it very thin and flexible, it would have more or less that shape. Of course, uh, we don't know how mobile phones are going to be shaped in the future, but it's like an extrapolation to that sense. Sure. I mean, from a rectangle and square, that decision you made based on that. Because that might affect your results. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. Then I, could you... Uh, like selection of the, your original shape being square might affect the results or not? Oh, yeah. It's possible, yes. Um, I think m more designs should be employed. And it actually somehow uh, connects to the first slide where I mentioned that round shapes are sometimes preferred. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but uh, it should be explored more, absolutely. Important. Good point. Thank you. Hi. Really interesting. Uh, have you thought of not just about uh, using not just about to communicate emotions but to recognize emotions in situations like uh, where professionals want to understand what patients are going through like for example psychiatrists psychologists uh, we haven't considered that